When people leave a firm like Goldman Sachs, they typically do one of three things. They either join a competitor in the same industry, or they go and join a different company in a completely different industry, or they do number three, which is go and found or start their own company. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about individuals who have left Goldman Sachs to go and start their own businesses. Now, what's interesting about today's video is that there are tons of people who were at Goldman's who went and started successful businesses. However, in today's video, I'm gonna focus on individuals who were part of my cohort when I was at Goldman. So individuals who started with me as an analyst or an intern or individuals who kind of worked at the similar time when I was there. So without any further ado, let's get straight to it. All right, the first person I wanna talk about is Maria. So she was an Oxford graduate. She was actually the president of the Oxford Union when she was there. And she interned with me. So when I interned in 2013, I interned in Goldman Sachs Asset Management and she interned in Goldman Sachs Private Wealth Management or Private Banking, if I remember correctly. Anyway, after interning, she got a full-time offer and joined the Investment Banking Division in 2014. So she spent, I think it was two years in the Investment Banking Division and then she decided to leave and she left and joined the venture capital firm 8VC. So after spending the first part of her career in London and then going and joining a venture capital firm in the US, she thought it was the right time to leave and pursue her entrepreneurial journeys. And so in 2019, if I remember correctly, she founded or co-founded Agora. Now Agora is modernizing the construction supply chain. And since its launch in 2019, it's been hugely successful. In November, 2020, they raised $7 million series A. And then in mid 2021, so last year, Agora raised $33 million as a series B led by Tiger Global Management. Now that is big. Of all the companies I'm gonna to mention today, this is the most successful in terms of fundraising and in terms of how big it's actually gone on to be. And so congrats to Maria, if you're watching this, you smashed it. For those of you that aren't too familiar with fundraising terms, so initially when you're a startup, you are raising a pre-seed. This is anywhere between $100,000 and up to $500,000. And then you've got a seed round. So a seed amount of money that you're raising is anywhere between a million dollars and two, three million dollars. And then you've got a series A. Series A rounds go from three million dollars up to $10 million around that. And then series B go from $10 million up to 20, 30 million dollars. Series C goes 30 million plus, so on and so forth. So that's what that means if you're new to these terms. If you want a video on all of that, let me know in the comments below. So yeah, Agora has been hugely successful and Maria is the CEO and co-founder of that business. And yeah, let's go to the next startup. All right, so the next person we're talking about is Nee Cleland. Now I remember Nee because I interned in the same year as him as well. Both interned in 2013. I was in asset management, Nee was in securities, so sales and trading or global markets. And then he converted that into a full-time offer for the following year. He studied, I think he went to Warwick for his undergrad and then he did his masters later on in at UCL in uh, technology entrepreneurship. I did my research. So he spent two years at Goldman's between 2014 and 2016 and then he left to kind of pursue entrepreneurship. He started something called Flair Football and this was kind of like it was a company that wanted to make kids who play football make them feel like they're pro footballers. After Flair Football he decided to pivot the business and from what I know from looking online he started Flair Impact with his cousin. So what is Flair his new company? In essence Flair is helping companies build cultures where all ethnicities can thrive. So it's basically a startup. It's a company that focuses on tackling racial inequality in the workplace. Now, how they do this is basically they go to their clients, different organizations across industries, and they do surveys with those organizations. They get their employees to answer questions on racial inequality, racism in the workplace, etc., etc. They get all the data, they analyze it, and they give actionable insights to those companies. And then they go back a year later, do those surveys again, and see if there's been any change. And obviously this is very important in this day and age, not just in the UK, all over the world. And so there's clearly demand from organizations for a company like Flair. Now, Ni and his team have raised over $1.5 million for Flair. 
and that's been led by around from i think the lead investor was hoxton ventures but you can find all this online all the companies that i talk about and all the people that i talk about today you can find their websites and links in the description down below all right next up we've got another person from goldman sachs asset management he joined in 2014 as a graduate I can't remember if he did an internship, but his name is Jesse Link. Now he joined with me, except he was in a different team. I think he was in the private markets team and he was based in New York. Also, he stayed at Goldman's for a good six years. So he left in 2020 after he became a VP and he left to start a company that focuses on wedding planning. So he started or he founded Rella and they focus on making wedding planning easier for those who are getting married simple next we've got david crowther david is the founder of charter charter I've, i don't know him personally but i think we've messaged each other on dms on instagram but anyway charter is basically a company website instagram page that uses data to create interesting charts. Now they've got over 400,000 followers on Instagram, really cool Instagram page, check them out. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. They use tons of data to create interesting charts and graphs. He started that in 2019 and so far he's been running that for three years and it's been hugely successful. Next up, we've got Maria Eugenia Filmanovic and I feel like I've exchanged emails with her back and forth when I was at Goldman's. She was in asset management, similar to me, but she was in the alternative investments and managers selection business so aims the area of asset management where they focus specifically on hedge funds and private equity investing now maria was at goldman's for a good six or seven years she became a vp and then she left she left i think last year to start a baitable a baitable is a startup that basically focuses on carbon emissions their strap line on the website is carbon offsetting procurement that you can trust so maria graduated from bocconi in italy and then she did her masters in uh in the uk from oxford university and what's interesting about maria is her company so they she's been working on it for nine months and they have managed to get into y combinator for those of you that don't know y combinator it's kind of like the goldman sachs or the harvard of the startup accelerator world so it's a startup accelerator program where some of the world's best companies or startups have gone through so companies like doordash coinbase airbnb all of these multi-billion dollar startups go through or have been through Y Combinator, they get investment, they go through the accelerator program, it helps them grow and it kind of sets them apart and it's very, very hard to get into Y Combinator. Anyway, Abatable, Maria's company is or was in Y Combinator and they've raised money. I don't know how much exactly, but they've raised funding from Y Combinator, Blue Bear Capital and GFC, Global Founders Capital. One thing I'm noticing is a lot of these companies that people are starting are very socially conscious or have a social focus or impact focus attached to them, which is interesting and good. Maybe it's the fact that there's a lot more millennials or Gen Z or Gen Y coming through and they are more socially conscious but it's good either way. Next up, we've got Alina Lopez, who is the founder of Chef. Their mission is to end food waste across stores and restaurants. Alina started at Goldman's in 2015 in their securities division, did two years there and then joined BCG, Boston Consulting Group between 2017 and 2019, left to join an e-commerce tech company after that, and then started Chef in 2021. Second to last person we're talking about today is Joachim. So Joachim is the co-founder and CEO of Pluto Markets. Pluto Markets is basically an investing app that wants to make investing more sociable or more of a sociable experience. Joachim was a metals trader at Goldman between 2016 and 2019. And the idea behind the investing app Pluto is to kind of, you know, a lot of younger people are starting to invest. And so he wants to make it easier for them to jump onto the app and start investing within two clicks. Pluto is also interestingly a Y Combinator company. So it's joined the accelerator for their winter 2022 batch, which is between January and March. So actually at present, they're on the Y Combinator accelerator and they've actually raised $800,000 between Y Combinator and a few other investors. I think they've got a team of five at present, but either way, it should be interesting to see where they take the business over the coming months and year. So congrats, Joachim. Last but not least is yours truly me 
So I was at Goldman's within the asset management business from 2014. And then I decided to pursue entrepreneurship and kind of content creation since 2018. So the idea was to do one video a week on YouTube to help people break into industries such as banking that were typically quite opaque and not very transparent. So I wanted to share some advice to help those break in. When I started my entrepreneurial journey, I did CV doctor, which was kind of like career consulting, but it wasn't very scalable. And so what I decided was to build a company called Simply. At the time, I didn't know how to build it. However, fast forward a few years and we're in 2021, 2022 and Simply launched a few weeks ago. So Simply is basically a platform where leaders help learners with career advice that works. So if you are interested in booking a leader in any industry that you're interested in, you could literally go on the Simply website, find a leader and book a free video call with them. Now, this is very important. Simply is only currently available for UK learners. And the reason for that is I'm testing the platform out in the UK before it gets rolled out globally. Another important point to mention simply is for learners who are from low socioeconomic backgrounds because I want it to have impact and I want it to help those who need the help the most. So simply essentially connects leaders with learners for free career advice. A leader is anyone who has a job offer in any industry and a learner is someone who's looking to apply to jobs and internships. Leaders on the platform can sign up from anywhere in the world. However, learners for now on simply are only from the UK. One thing I wanted to mention before wrapping up the video is that of the people that I've mentioned, most people actually spent two or three or four years at most at Goldman's before they left. One or two of the individuals spent five or six years, they became VPs and then left. I know there's a lot of you who are currently in university or you're gonna graduate or you're junior professionals who have just graduated and you're thinking, should you pursue a traditional career working for a bank and then, you know, climbing? or you know, you're quite interested in entrepreneurship, you wanna start something on the side. My advice to you is try and start something on the side and see if it works. If there's good traction, then you can pursue it full time. But more than anything, sometimes you can't do Goldman Sachs or work for an investment bank and to do a startup on the side like properly because you need to commit yourself fully, right? And so in that case, you wanna position yourself as best as possible. One of the advantages of being or working for a top firm like Goldman Sachs is that you have that stamp of approval on your CV. So it makes it easier to kind of break into the industry later on or get another job in the same company or a similar company. And so if you're in university, try and get the best job you can out of university. Um, and when you get there, give yourself two years, build your work experience. Two years at an investment bank will give you a good platform to build a strong set of skills, whether that's working on Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, Excel, building client relationships, working on Excel models, valuation techniques, whatever it is, when you spend two years at an investment bank after graduating, you develop your work ethic, you work long hours, you develop strong analytical skills, communication skills, all these things, and they help you further along in your journey when you decide to change companies or go and do your own thing. So my advice to you, do two years at the bank and then between years two and five at that point you should kind of consider if you want to take the risk and do something different go and start your own company or change industry because after that it gets very tricky it becomes harder and harder the more senior you get and the reason for that is you get paid more a lot more of your pay becomes tied up in equity or stock options which you need to work at the company for longer in order to unlock so the commitment becomes larger between you and the firm and it just naturally becomes harder because as you get older you might get married you might have kids start a family you might have a mortgage all these things come into play whereas if you're 22 23 24 25 it's a lot easier leave a like if you want me to make a video where i talk about entrepreneurs who are from goldman but not necessarily from my class because there's so many people that leave to create huge massive impressive companies that are tackling so many problems across the world or just providing solutions to problems that people experience. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll leave all of the LinkedIn profiles and websites of all of the people and companies that I mentioned in today's video in the video description below as well. And I will see you, actually, before I see you in the next video, if you're new around here, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. And if you made it to the end, smash the like button so that the YouTube algorithm knows that this is a great video. Anywho, I will see you in the next video. Peace.